Hi, this is Clara of Clara Applewhite Designs. I am coming to you because I wanted to share this different process with you. I am doing my home collection and one of my remembrances is a buku reef in Tobago. It's a coral reef that is slowly coming back to life. Now, with this particular theme that I'm doing, I decided I'm going to incorporate the direct painting technique along with the Guta technique, the Guta Serti technique. Now, remember, the direct painting means I'm painting the, the paint or the dye directly onto the silk. So what I'm doing, the design is already taped to the well of my screen and the silk has been tacked to the top so you can see the design through. Now I'm just going to paint these patches of color in particular areas of the design because there are certain fishes that I want to remain white so it's just going to be in some areas so it's just a few places then I'm going to let it dry and then I do the drawing. So I have my Sumi brush, I've shaken my paint and I have my tab and now I'm going to apply the dye or the paint directly to the fabric so you will see some bleeding. Now this is just one color and I'm going to do a second color. Shake this very well. Now you see there are streaks in there. Don't let that bother you too much. So I've chosen to do these elliptical shapes just to, as a symbol of a water droplet. And that's it. So I'm going to let this dry. And then in a couple hours. It is a fairly damp day, so it may take a little longer to dry. So in a couple hours, I come back and draw the design, the entire design with the Guta, the water-based Guta. So, see you then. So now that it's dry, anyone who is attempting to do the direct painting and the Guta Serity technique as I am. Make sure that the first layer of paint is as translucent enough so that you can still see the design through the paint. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of visual problems. So now, here I go, applying the Guta, drawing the design. I always put a border on the edge, so I do that first. So now the first layer of paint is dry and I have begun painting some of the pieces. Now what we're going to focus on is what happens, the reaction of the paint to the areas that have already been painted. I have to be deliberate in my stroke of these particular areas because it's going to appear like paper. And you'll see the difference with the paint, how it reacts to the virgin silk in this area as opposed to this. This stroke here, you see it flowing freely and easily. 
So I'm going to do paint that section. And as soon as it hits the painted area, I have to be more deliberate in my stroke. It's as if I'm painting on virgin paper as opposed to fabric. Now, I, the same rules apply. You have to keep the front line wet and keep pushing the paint because there is resistance now to the brush. So I'm moving quickly still and pushing the paintbrush even harder than if it were on the virgin silk. And we're going to see it again in the tail area. I'm being very deliberate and painting in this. And as soon as it hits the virgin silk, you see how it flows all on its own. Basically, that's the capillary action that you see right before your eyes. So you just have to be aware of that. and enjoy the process. I'm going to pick up any excess paint because you don't want any puddling. Just go over to make sure you don't have too much lines appearing. And that's it. So just to recap, because this is the final stage, I'm trying a different technique. I did some over underpainting. If you can vaguely see it there, before I drew the design with the guta, the water-based guta, once that was dry, then I came in and painted on top of the underpainting. And now that it's dry, I'm going to do an overpainting of the same type of shapes in different parts of the design. And remember, I'm painting on paint. So it's a over painting, different shapes. And you're going to get that kind of effect. You can experiment just as I do. You may or may not like the effect, but you always try to keep your pieces a little bit interesting. So I'm putting these shapes in and around the areas of the last, the first layer of paint. As you see, it is, they, all the colors are translucent, so you can vaguely see them. I've chosen to do two colors for the last stage. This was the one of the colors right there when I first started. So now I'm going to apply the second color, which happens to be the green of the seaweed at Buku Reef. And happily for us, the reef is coming back to what it used to be long ago. People used to take away the conch shells and it degraded it somewhat and now with all the restrictions the reef is coming back more colorful fish as well as the wonderful heads of coral So it will be quite interesting to see what this looks like when we wash it out.
take a step back, see if we need anything else, anywhere else. Now this direct painting is not for the faint of heart. You're not gonna get perfect edges. As you can see, there is still a little bleeding, but that's part of the beauty of the technique. So just to go over again, the first step, the underpainting of these shapes, you see them very faint. Then we went into the drawing with the guta. Once that was dry, we went into the painting. And my last step is the overpainting directly onto what I just completed. So we let this dry and then it is heat set with a hot iron. After which I hang it to cure for two days. Now the Buku Reef scarf is complete and by that I mean it has been washed out. So it's ready to be sold. Remember in this particular scarf, we were trying to incorporate direct painting with the guta. So there are layers to this design. The first piece I did was painting directly onto the silk. You'll see these ghost-like images. Once that was dry, I then drew the design with the guta. So this is where you're seeing all the line work. Remember, it's Buku Reef, lots of fishes, and it's a coral reef in Tobago. Once that was dry, then I went back in and did some overpainting of the same shape, smaller, close to the initial underpainting. So you, you see it better in this section. The underpainting, the overpainting. So now, hopefully, this will whet your appetite to try and experiment using repetitive images. In this case, I use these small sardine-like fishes and the other baka fishes. You can use, try it out with geometric shapes. So you choose your shape of choice, do the direct painting directly onto the silk, the virgin silk, let it dry, draw some other shapes or the same shape, let that dry after you paint it and then superimpose the third layer of direct painting and see what you get. Do try it out. Enjoy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check me out at Clara Designs Art on Instagram. Enjoy.